and today's movie review is The Irishman. So um, <clears throat> before I go on to the review or anything like that, I just want to tell Netflix something or show or even tell Netflix something. I would like to tell fuck you to Netflix. I mean seriously fuck you Netflix because I lost a chance of watching such a brilliant film in theatres because of you. I mean it's not, I don't think, I don't know if it's your fault or not but we didn't get a wide theatrical release because of you which is sad because for such a film you need a wide theatrical release. I mean this, these kind of films should be watched in theatre or else there's no point of watching such a film. I mean, there is a point of watching such a film, but if not in theatre, why? <sighs> anyway, man, I was just throughout after I watched the movie, I was just frustrated of why didn't Netflix just release this masterpiece in theatres? Yes, a masterpiece. And if you thought Joker was the best film of the year, please, alright, please, because it's it's a good film. Joker is a good film, but. Can I say it's the best of the year? No. Irishman has to be the best of the year because I haven't watched Parasite or The Light Lighthouse hasn't released. Parasite, I have to watch Parasite. Lighthouse hasn't released. Two Popes have two Popes is releasing in December. Marriage Story is releasing in December. So I guess after watching all those movies, I might make a list on the best movies of 2019. Currently, I guess it's The Irishman, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like first and second. Joker comes in at third. It's not the best though. I mean, people are disagreeing on me that saying that Joker is the best movie of the year. I don't know what's what's wrong with that. Anyway, so the Irishman or I heard you paint houses. I heard you paint houses is a book's name by Charles Brandt. Is directed by Manu Scorsese, the Goat. So and yeah, it, it stars Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Al Pacino. Right off the bat, Al Pacino stood up. I mean, it was, it's been a long time since I've seen Al Pacino shout and, you know, just be himself in a film. I mean, it was just, it was such a calm and composed actor in The Godfather 1, but then Dog Day Afternoon, you know, Scarface and stuff like that, he was just Al Pacino. And here you get to see that Scarface is Al Pacino. I mean, man, he killed it. He was a powerhouse. Robert De Niro, as usual, he is literally the greatest living actor of living actor right now. And yeah, and Joe Pesci has gives a very subtle performance in this film. I mean, he was a firecracker in Goodfellas. I mean, man, that performance I couldn't get over that for a long time. I mean, Joe Pesci. I don't know if I don't know if he scared me or just moved me. For the first time, I just saw a character on the film and I was like, "Wow!" Just I went blank after watching his acting. I mean, here Al Pacino should, stands out. Joe Pesci gives a subtle performance, but in scenes even he's a powerhouse. Robert De Niro, as usual, and right off the bat, the movie the masterpiece. In let us just accept that fact because. I've never seen Martin Scorsese make a bad film and people say that New York, New York is a bad film but I kind of liked it and uh, and, 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 and the editing by Thelma Schumacher I guess the direction, the screenplay and editing stood out for me because I guess for the first time, not for the first time but after a long time there were no continuity errors in the editing I mean I, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but in Wolf of Wall Street, it was jarring for me. For me, it was jarring. I don't know. There are people who are fans of it. But for me, it was personally jarring when I was watching the Wolf of Wall Street. There were continuity errors and I was like, okay. And then this film, I mean, the way she has edited, I mean, they're literally the greatest director editor duo of all time. Martin Scorsese and Tanma Schumacher. And if we go into the story, the story is about Frank Sheeran and how he gets into contact with uh, Buffolini and then Jesse Buffolini. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? I just remember Buffolini, guys. I just remember. Okay, the Joe Pesci's character, Buffolini, 
and then how he meets Jimmy Hoffa through him and all the things he goes through because of one thing that happens to Jimmy Hoffa who does what to Jimmy Hoffa is the story I mean it's not really a story story it's just a character it's just a gist not even just a, a, a note of a part of life of Frank Sheeran like what happens to him after he joins the mob I mean from a truck driver to finally a mob uh, a retired mob person how he feels one thing I didn't get from the movie if you guys have gotten it please comment down below who is Frank Sheeran narrating the story to is it the priest the father as probably he's committing his sins to him is this is that Charles Brandt or is that um, or is that him talking to himself I don't know I mean Martin Scorsese uses a very traditional his traditional way of making a film like narration how a person narrates the entire film I mean that I mean many directors have tried it but no one has done it better than Martin Scorsese I feel because even in Wolf of Wall Street it was seamless, Goodfellas it was seamless, Taxi Driver it was seamless. So I just really loved how the narrative structure goes. Screenplay was written really well by Steve Book, Zuccherini Book, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. And uh, let's, so the one thing that was most talked about other than the actors and Scorsese was the de-aging effect. People have called it bad, people have called it good. For, but for me, after a while, it became okay. Like starting, it was like it was distracting for me when I was the film starting, starting me. When I was watching, I was like, oh, why? Like for the first 20, 12, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And after that, it became, it became okay. Like because it's a three and a half hour film, like 10, 15 minutes. After 10, 15 minutes, it becomes okay. I mean, it's not really that distracting <laughs> as the as compared to the continuity errors in the Wolf of Wall Street it's really good and uh, and coming to the production design was was spot on I mean I don't know how 40s, 50s, 60s America or the USA looked or in the 70s or in the 80s this movie goes on for decades long and for the first time I guess three and a half hours wasn't that long for me I mean Three and a half hours, I mean this movie is, the runtime is three and a half hours but it doesn't seem like it's a three, two, ten minute film. It just, I just felt like watching a two hour, possibly a one and a half hour film. I mean, it's a slow, it's a slow paced film but it doesn't make you, it doesn't bore you. Just because it's a slow paced film, it doesn't bore you. So that's really good. And I mean, after I, I miss... I mean, I watch, I started watching Scorsese a year ago and after watching Goodfellas, Casino and stuff like that, I just missed Scorsese. I mean, after Goodfellas, I guess this is his best film. I mean, yeah. And um, yeah, I guess that's the review. Acting was great. Direction was great. Editing was great. <coughs> CGI was great. Everything was great. Everything was great. I mean, what else can you expect from Scorsese? A bad film? So I'm going with 5 out of 5 for this film. For sure. Please watch it, it's on Netflix. But the one thing I regretted is that I couldn't watch this masterpiece in theatres. But if something happens, let us see. So that's it. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends if you like this review. And this is my first review, so I might look nervous and stuff. I mean first video review I'm, I could have looked nervous or dumb or something like that but it's okay I guess thank you